Across the planet, human beings everywhere are becoming an urban species, gravitating in ever greater numbers towards urban centers and more and more plagued by urban issues such as non-communicable diseases, financial crises, social disparity, global climate change, and ineffectual polarized political structures that are threatening the sustainability of the species. At the University of Toronto, there's a critical mass of global health experts unmatched by any other Canadian institution. The Dalai Lama School of Public Health is harnessing this collective brain power to inspire a young generation of global and public health leaders who will advance the idea of creating and spreading health equitably through innovation. While we may be the newest faculty at the University of Toronto, the Dalai Lama School of Public Health is deeply rooted in Toronto's history. The history of the School of Public Health is actually fascinating. It all began in 1927 when the Rockefeller Foundation invested in the creation of schools of hygiene at the University of Toronto, Johns Hopkins, and Harvard. By the 1930s, the school was a global leader in the development of antitoxin to diphtheria, to vaccines, safer practices for food sanitation, water sanitation, public health nursing. The school was a magnificent contributor to public health in the 40s and 50s, but then the configuration started to change. The antitoxin laboratory, which then became the Connaught Laboratories, a wonderful leader in where several of the best scientists discovered insulin and won the Nobel Prize for that, was sold and eventually became Sanofi Pasteur, a wonderful company that is now a global leader in research and development of vaccines. Uh, the 1990s, a series of crises began that really shook the faith of Canada in its public health system, uh, culminating in the SARS crisis of 2003, when a lot of Toronto was shut down and there were multiple deaths resulting of this epidemic. And among the insights that were generated is that public health is a field of its own that we must invest in, not only at the governmental level, but also at the education and research level. It also led to a young man named Paul Dalana to walk into the University of Toronto, declare his passion for public health, and make a wonderful tens of millions of dollars of gift. I think the step of, of narrowing in on the Dalana School and working with the University of Toronto was uh, really an easy one because we were looking for an opportunity to contribute that could make an impact and to build on uh, excellence and something perhaps that was a little bit, uh, I'll call it undervalued in the business sense, but not fully appreciated. And really the School of Public Health fit that bill perfectly because the constellation of expertise and abilities here at the University of Toronto existed, but they existed in parts that I don't think many people saw fully together. I know that with the knowledge that we already have, we can change the lives of millions of people in the world, and that's called public health. The Institute for Global Health Equity and Innovation, uh, which is housed at the Dalalana School of Public Health, is a joint effort by multiple groups and faculties within the University of Toronto that share a passion and a strong interest for the promotion of health equity through innovation. You might have an urban planner next to a demographer, next to an anthropologist, next to an epidemiologist, uh, people involved in the private sector, uh, all working together, every academic institution has a program, a department, a center, a institute uh, in, in global health. And we're constantly being asked, why does the University of Toronto want to do this? Well, interestingly enough, there's, despite the fact that it's such a crowded field, there's still a lot of different areas in global health that aren't being covered at all uh, or covered adequately. We can leverage the enormous talent at the University of Toronto, which exists practically nowhere else in the world. It's certainly amongst the top uh, universities in the world, and then it has probably the highest concentration of people working in various areas of global health. 
global health kind of emerged as a field over the last five to ten years, many, many faculty members were involved in global health, but they hadn't actually found a place where they could conveniently uh, work with each other. So now we're bringing everybody together. The point of the summit is to harness that vast amount of intellectual talent, great ideas, um, great leaders, great teachers, and a really motivated student body. Convening them now, as we're doing in the summit, is the ideal time because we'll be able to see what hasn't been done, or what needs to be done, and I think kind of the core idea around which this summit has, is, is anchored, the idea of a pandemic of health, is actually getting people to start to think about global health in a slightly different way. So no field touches the human experience more than public health. What we do is create information, and if you create information that multiplies just like a virus, it gets out there and it has an impact on policy, it has an impact on societies. You can't just look at health in one little lens because health is interrelated to you know, the society as a whole. So unless we understand other domains such as the, the politics of a situation, looking at other sectors that are impacting on health outcomes, we're not going to get very far. This makes it harder, but it also makes it more compelling to work with other people in different fields, with different perspectives, and to try and get at what we call the so-called wicked problems collectively. What we've got here that's really special at U of T is that we have existing uh, collaborations. We have a large critical mass of people tackling some of these questions together already. So in fact what we've got is something extremely special. In fact, sometimes I think about this as we have a moral imperative. This particular institution has a very special opportunity of influencing health within Canada and creating and promoting cadres of workers who graduate from a range of disciplines but have had an opportunity to learn the principles and arts and bolts of how to reduce inequities, not only the diagnostic, but also the therapeutic for this, so they can go and do something about this. We are in close contact as academics with policymakers, and our research affects them directly. So there's an opportunity. So we're at the, you know, we're a big university in the biggest city of the country, and we're next to the leadership of the largest province in the country. Public health is a field of its own that we must invest in. I really personally challenge everyone in the same way that we've taken up the challenge to get involved. But we have as much to learn from our colleagues who are living in other parts of the world as they have to learn from us. The aim of innovation is to make uh, tomorrow a better world than it is today. And our problems are the world's problem. We are uniquely positioned to create and spread health and in fact to trigger a pandemic of health from Toronto.